introducing a new clinical trial that we're starting in the spring of 2017. These are my disclosures. AstraZeneca is providing drug-only funding for this uh, study, and it's an investigator-initiated rather than a company-initiated clinical trial. So as we heard, soft tissue sarcomas, there's about 12,000 new diagnoses per year in the U.S. That's about 240 in Maryland, about 5,000 deaths per year in the USA, about 100 in Maryland. 90% of patients present with basically localized disease with soft tissue sarcomas. However, up to 50% develop metastatic disease. And the average survival is about 12 to 18 months uh, with metastatic disease. Uh, the standard of care for soft tissue sarcoma includes radiation and wide surgical resection. Chemotherapy is uh, controversial. It varies widely amongst institutions. Generally, if it's not resectable, uh, you consider neoadjuvant chemotherapy to improve resectability. And typically, the approach to soft tissue sarcoma with limited metastatic disease is similar to localized disease. So chemotherapy for already metastatic soft tissue sarcoma Typically, cytotoxic chemotherapy is used. Um, cytotoxic chemotherapy is not specifically particular to tumor type, and it acts by killing rapidly dividing cells, whether they're malignant or not. Doxorubicin and sometimes ifosfamide are the uh, key players for cytotoxic chemotherapy. It has about a one-third response rate when used with uh, advanced soft tissue sarcoma. Uh, other agents include trabectidin, that demonstrates about a 20 to 30 percent six months uh, stable disease as a second line agent. Uh, these agents can prolong uh, progression free survival, but essentially there's no cure for metastatic soft tissue sarcoma. There's about a 5 percent long term survival rate. Uh, what about localized soft tissue sarcoma and chemotherapy? Some retrospective studies have demonstrated improved survival with neoadjuvant or adjuvant chemotherapy, but large studies and meta-analyses uh, typically do not show a significant or a limit, only show a limited improvement in survival, or benefits are not sustained for multiple years. Doxorubicin has uh, dose-dependent cardiac toxicity, and ifosfamide can lead to myelosuppression. And with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we often see a 14 to 18% progression rate of the primary tumor during neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And hence, many centers do only radiation and surgery for localized soft tissue sarcoma. What about targeted therapy? Advances in DNA technology have led to personalized medicine. Design-specific drugs, antibodies to target tumor-specific mutations or upregulated genes, some of these include pazopanib and uh, even newer oleratumab. These uh, target things such as VEGF and PDGF. Uh, the studies are still uh, out on that. Oleratumab uh, basically came out very recently with some uh, promising uh, results, but they are early phase uh, studies. Most cancers are genetically diverse and evolved, and some authors have uh, questions whether they're overwhelmingly complex and this one drug, one gene model may be unsustainable. So what's the improvement in survival for soft tissue sarcoma over the years? As you can see with this graphic, there has not been significant improvements in overall survival with soft tissue sarcoma. This led one author in the UK to remark, it could be argued it has been a major impediment to our progress in treating these diseases. Important key elements such as resection margin and radiotherapy are unlikely to change. However, there are also practices we must be prepared to change, and if appropriate, even discard. Uh, one of these is empirical use of neoadjuvant high-dose combination chemotherapy in completely resected adult soft tissue sarcoma. So what's the timeline for immunotherapy in cancer? It started back in the 1890s with Coley's toxin. William Coley actually used this in a sarcoma patient. His Coley's toxin was a concoction of bacteria to essentially rev up the immune system to try to treat cancer. We leap forward over a, over a century to 2011 with the advent of the first checkpoint inhibitors approved for cancer. And in the lower graphic here, you can see there's been multiple generations of checkpoint inhibitors, basically an explosion of multiple companies inventing their versions of checkpoint inhibitors. 
And so this is basically a new paradigm for immunotherapy. Uh, for us orthopedists, these are the basic concepts. Your immune system normally clears out infection and defective or mutated cells. Successful tumors uh, evade the immune system by suppressing the immune system. And these tumors can hide their antigens from immune cells in order to prevent recognition and clearance from the body. Tumors can activate the natural CTLA-4 and PD-1 or PDL-1 pathway as a means to suppress the immune system. This leads to so-called T-cell exhaustion. So the thought is, what if we can awaken the immune system to fight and possibly defeat the tumor? Anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1 and anti-PDL-1 agents uh, have been uh, invented recently. They've seen breakthrough success in advanced melanoma, bladder cancer, lung cancer, and other types of carcinoma. Many patients have complete responses and durable responses. Uh, the poster child of this is former President Jimmy Carter. The news came out that he's essentially disease-free after having metastatic melanoma to the brain, which prior to this was essentially a death sentence. Uh, unlike static chemotherapy agents, there's a possibility that the immune system can even evolve uh, as the cancer evolves. Uh, and we're seeking to suppress, to not only suppress or slow the progression, but actually fight the tumor. So our clinical trial is a prospective, integrated, phase one, phase two trial. We're opening it in spring 2017. Our goal is, is modest, 35 patients. We recently got news that the FDA approved our study. Uh, we're looking at high-risk soft tissue sarcomas. These represent grade two, grade three, greater than or equal to five centimeters and deep to the fascia. Uh, we're looking at basically localized or very limited metastatic disease. We're looking at pelvis and extremity lesions in adults. The rationale is that studies have shown that radiation plus dual checkpoint uh, blockade activate different pathways in the immunotherapy or in the immune system. This is the first neoadjuvant clinical trial for soft tissue sarcomas with combination immunoradiotherapy. The attempt is to clear this micrometastatic disease while the disease burden is still low. We want to use the primary tumor as essentially an in situ vaccine for the immune system to recognize the tumor antigens. Our goal is to use it before rather than after chemotherapy because cytotoxic chemotherapy can depress the immune system and defeat the purpose of immunotherapy. And neoadjuvant radiation exposes the tumor antigen so that the immune system can then recognize uh, the, immune, the uh, neoantigens. We want to give these high-risk soft tissue sarcoma patients the po opportunity to possibly uh, see some of the benefit that has revolutionized other areas of cancer treatment. Our algorithm is this. We look at high-risk soft tissue sarcomas. During their typical neoadjuvant radiation therapy, we interdigitate two immunotherapy agents, tremolimumab and dervalimab, while they're getting their neoadjuvant radiation. We then proceed to surgical resection of the primary tumor. And then postoperatively, if they have no evidence of disease, we give them four doses of dervalimab monotherapy. And if they have uh, residual disease, we give them uh, nine weeks or nine doses of dervalimab. Thank you.